Oh howdy all, grab yourself a beer, it's time for some Path of Exile discussion. This is the second in a three-part series in which I'm going to look at the challenges in the Ritual League, uh, and where the first video covered the 15 challenges that I consider to be the easiest in this league, uh, this video is going to cover the middle 11. So if you do all of these, you'll have 26 challenges, which is more than enough to get yourself the Ritual character effect. Uh, if you're going to want to go for the 36 for the Ritualist Hideout, you're going to need to look at the third video in the series as well. So I'm going to skip over the 15 challenges that I consider to be the easiest. Uh, they have already been covered in the first video. Additionally, uh, this spreadsheet is available on my blog and I'll put a link to it in the description below the video. So, first up we have Complete These Encounters 3. Now, this is a precision boss kill encounter. Uh, and these vary in difficulty quite a bit. However, I do think that they're all pretty manageable. So firstly, I defeat Captain Claiborne the Accursed in Frozen Cabins map without defeating any drowned crew. Uh, this one is really easy if you can kill the boss fast. So the boss at some point during the encounter, I think it might be at 40% health or something like that, uh, he summons additional monsters and you've got to kill the boss without killing any of those monsters. However, the summoning isn't instant, so the key is just simply killing Captain Claiborne before those drowned crew are active, uh, and if you can do that, then you'll find this, fight, uh, this encounter to be a freebie. Uh, if your DPS is pretty low, do this on a low tier Frozen Cabins map and scour the map first. So, defeat Ormond Fiend of the Flood in Forking River map uh, without being hit by Water Vortex or Collapsing Orb. This is again just something where you need to burn the boss down as quickly as possible. Forking River is available as a tier 3 map, so just scour one of them and you'll be able to do this just fine. A fair warning, this boss is actually pretty difficult. He was a lot harder at the start of the league. I think it was really overtuned. But the key thing is just kill the boss uh, in a couple of seconds and you won't need to deal with any of these mechanics. A defeat Lysias Midnight's Howl in, wolf, in Lair map when he is channeling Wolf Barrage. Lysias normally opens with Wolf Barrage. It's usually the first significant skill that he uses. So again, this is one where you can just simply burst him down as fast as possible uh, and get credit for it. Alternately, it's been my experience that this one, you just do it by accident sometimes uh, because Wolf Barrage is one of the best times to deal damage to the boss uh, as long as you're able to deal damage whilst remaining safe from the Wolf Barrage itself. Uh, easiest way to get this though, in my opinion, is to drop a decoy totem on the other side of Rigwald. Uh, when Rigwald's attacking the decoy totem, uh, then you can attack him from behind and just knock him out quickly while he's doing his Wolf Barrage, because Wolf Barrage actually goes for a little while. So Wolf Barrage, just in case it's not clear, is the frontal cone attack that, uh, that Rigwald uses, uh, and that's the sort of, um, hits like maybe a a 90 degree arc in front of Rigwald. Uh, normally you would hide from this by hiding behind a tree, but you can attack him during it if you're careful, as, as long as you can endure the wolf barrage, or you can use a decoy totem and make sure that it doesn't hit you at all. Now the tricky one is to defeat the Gorgon in self events map while all players are petrified. There's a few ways you can do this, and the way that I'd first thought of was using Replica Rumi's Concoction uh, and some sort of some sort of um, totem skill that culls. However, uh, a couple of viewers have come up with better ideas, and I think the best one is to equip the unique boots, Calm's Roots. Now, Calm's Roots are actually pretty rare as a drop, uh, but there's a couple of ways that you can deterministically farm them. Uh, the first one is that some of the sewer tile set maps ha drop a rare divination card named The Throne. A set of two of those will give you a corrupted Calm's Roots. Uh, your other option, is to run a bunch of maps in the Alex Ejoris Octant of the Atlas with the Kadiro uh, Friends of the Family node allocated. Uh, and if you've got that, then you will be offered a lot of the relatively rare Drop Anywhere Uniques uh, will be offered to you as Kadiro trade deals very often. So even in Solo Cell Found, you'll be able to get that. You may need to do a 100 maps or so in Alex Ejoris. Uh, I certainly got offered Calm's Roots there three times, I think, in in 50 maps, uh, so it's not rare. And then once you're wearing those boots, your action speed cannot be slowed below 100% base. At that point, it's just a matter of uh, waiting until you are petrified, and then using whatever your normal attacks are to kill the boss. So I'm gonna recommend that. Uh, equip Calm's Roots and just swap around whatever you need to in order to make Calm's Roots work. 
uh, and then take down the Gorgon that way. Uh, next up we have turning divination cards. Now, there's a couple of these that are what I consider the best option for each of these. Uh, that means that it's the easiest to source a set of. Firstly, for itemized prophecy, uh, we have Ackles Prophecy, which drops like crazy from Perception Heist. So Heist, where the rogue skill that's required is Perception, uh, it can be Perception 1, that they will sometimes have chests that are prof prophecy themed, and those will often drop the divination card, Ackles Prophecy. I also believe that it drops from Elver Missions as well, so that's another option for getting it. For a map, there is a divination card that drops in the foothills, uh, about one card per two zone, per two, Ooh, sorry, per two zone clears. I believe it's called Cartographer's Delight. Uh, you'll probably find these in other places as well, uh, like in Heist map chess. Uh, set of three of those, turns in for a tier five map, easy. Scarab. Scarab is a tricky one. This is the hardest of the lot. So the easiest divination card for a Scarab uh, is probably Chimeria's Cut. Uh, and the way that you get that is by interacting with Chimeria through the betrayal system. Uh, alternately though, uh, you can probably find these from Fragment Chess in Heist and also from uh, Ritual Rewards. So have a look for those Divination Cards of Grant Scarabs there as well. Six Link Item and Unique Item are going to be the same. Uh, this is Tabula Rasa. Uh, Tabula Rasa, you can farm yourself a set of these Divination Cards uh, in the Waterways map or the Channels map. Or if you're uh, not at Endgame, you can farm it in Blood Aqueduct in Act 9 or even in Aqueduct in Act 4. Uh, but actually the easiest way to get the Humility Divination cards for this is from uh, two sources, Rituals and Heist. Heist Armor Chess will drop the Humility Divination card like crazy and Rituals will drop it quite frequently as well. Okay, so next up we have for the Vile Gem, uh, Volatile Power Divination card from various underground and mine themed maps can drop it. Uh, also, the Bones is a divination card that drops from a rogue exile that's everywhere in the Delve Mines. Uh, check your loot filter, Bones might be hidden. Uh, you do want to have the Bones available and then that will be the, easy, that'll be the easiest options to turn in there. Okay, it's several more uh, challenges down until we get to one that is in the middle tier. Uh, so some of these are actually quite a bit harder, uh, like obtain ritual base types will be will be in the later sections that you get. Uh, but next up we have defeat conquerors of the atlas. Now, before you got 12, you probably had four or five progress on this. You probably fought Baran, Veritania, Elhesman, and Drox. But fighting Cirrus comes quite a bit later in progression. Uh, you won't have a, the first opportunity to fight Cirrus until you have 20 Watchstones acquired. And most players find that the first time they fight Cirrus, Cirrus kicks their ass. Uh, the Cirrus fight is actually pretty difficult, uh, and if you're looking for tips with it, there is an outstanding video that's been put out by Twitch streamer Don the Crown. Uh, he has a lot of experience in doing the fight in hardcore. However, uh, you can make the Cirrus Awakener of Worlds fight easier by removing Watchstones from your Atlas. Uh, the fight's difficulty is heavily impacted by the number of Watchstones that are present in your in your Atlas at the time that you talk to Zana to open the portals to Cirrus' Citadel. Uh, and if you reduce the number of Watchstones below 20, uh, the fight will become considerably easier. Doing this will reduce the rewards you'll get, but it's a good way to learn the Cirrus fight because ultimately uh, Cirrus is probably the most rewarding of all of the bosses in the game at the moment uh, with so many item drops that are either very good items uh, but that are cheap because they're very common in a trade league like, uh, like the excellent helmet that he drops that I think he has a 40% drop rate on so no one really wants it in a trade league but it's still a really good item. Uh, through to items that are a little bit rarer and very powerful like Thread of Hope, uh, through to an enormous amount of consumables like the Awakener's Orb, uh, the Misinformation Watchstone, and also all of the Awaken Spell Gems. Uh, he drops all of the Awaken Support Gems as well. So Cirrus is a fight that's very much worth learning. Uh, and you'll also get to fight him about once per 40 maps that you do at Endgame as well. Uh, so you'll get to run him quite a lot. So it is really worth learning. Anyway, that's enough talking about Cirrus. Uh, definitely worth your while getting, uh, getting your head around that fight, uh, but it is going to be in your 24 challenge list. So next up we have Complete Encounters 4. And Complete Encounters 4 is an interesting one in that it is uh, very, much a, uh, very much a grindier version of some of the earlier 
option, uh, some of the earlier challenges. So what you're going to do here is a whole bunch of past league mechanics, but you're actually going to need to do them with fairly high numbers. So you have Defeat Warband Leaders as an option, Rogue Exiles, Strong Boxes, Interact with Shrines, Parandus Chess, Beyond Bosses, Legion Encounters, and Open Maps with Fortune Favors the Brave. Now, this is an introduction to Zana's Map Mods. Zana's Map Mods are something that you'll have access to as you start progressing further through your Atlas, uh, once you get to the point that you've got, say, uh, once you get to the point that you've completed, say, 80 different maps, you'll have access to quite a lot of Zana's map mods, uh, and by the time that you hit 140 different maps, you'll have access to all of them. Uh, these are all tied to Zana's map mods. You will pick up some of them just by random gameplay, so Rogue Exiles, they can be in any map, and I think you'll find that you get 200 uh, of them with may maybe by the time you've done 500 maps. Uh, strong boxes are similar, they're everywhere. Shrines are similar, they're everywhere. But using Zana mods can dramatically accelerate your progress through some of these. Parandus chests are easiest found in the Lexajora section of the Atlas, uh, especially if you run those maps in conjunction with Parandus Scarabs, uh, which you'll probably be able to get. If you're in a trade league, you can get a lot of Parandus Scarabs really cheap. Uh, if you're not in a trade league, if you're in solo self found, you will find some of them in various other places. Beyond bosses, you will need to add beyond onto the map uh, onto a map through either rolling the mod beyond on the map, or using Zana's Beyond mod, or both together, uh, or also using a couple of the new uh, Echoes of the Atlas effects that add beyond to a map. Legion encounters. There's a very important point. You don't get credit for this unless you wipe out every single monster that you unfroze from the Legion monolith. Uh, so that's an easy mistake to make, uh, and I'm pretty sure that I've probably done more, a lot more than 43 Legion encounters, but I've left one or two stragglers alive because, you know, you don't see them there. Uh, and anyways, I'll get those in time. Opening maps with Fortune Favors the Brave is an option here. Uh, that just burns three chaos every time you do it, and it's an easy way to get an extra credit for this, uh, but... There are, you may get it through natural gameplay anyway. My suggestion with complete encounters four, don't worry about this until you hit 18 or 19 challenges done. And at that point, start target farming the ones that you that you still need. Uh, next up we have complete the Maven's Crucible. So this is Echoes of the Atlas content. Uh, when you encounter the Maven, we had an earlier challenge in the first 12 to acquire the Maven's Beacon. Uh, and you'll get that about the time that you finish up with t uh, with tier five maps and start trying to progress into tier six. For completing the Maven's Crucible, you will need to run maps that the Maven witnesses. And ultimately getting, because uh, th the three way fight is a prerequisite for four way, four way for five way, five way is a prereq for six and six way is a prereq for 10. Uh, you will need to do all of the, uh, you'll need to do all of these in roughly in the order that they're, or actually in the order that they're there. So, broadly speaking, in order to get the 10-way fight, you are going to need to do 10 maps in the same octant with four watchstones in that Atlas region. So that's going to mean that you'll be uh, solidly into tier 14 to 16 maps uh, in order to do this, uh, and you will then need to fight a 10-way encounter against map bosses all at once. Not quite all at once, in that uh, two of them will be present, two or three at the start of the fight, uh, and then uh, over time, more of them will be released from the stasis prisons that they're in. These fights are pretty difficult, and what I suggest you do is, until you are extremely confident in your character's power, uh, you are going to want to run these invitations scoured. So don't use an alchemy orb on them. They drop rare and unidentified, so identify them, scour them, and then run them scoured. Uh, once you get a lot more confidence with these fights, then you can use the uh, you can use uh, alchemy orbs and or even vile orbs to make them harder, uh, because they will be more rewarding. But for practice and especially while you're going for your 24 challenges, uh, just uh, worry with doing them at all. Uh, next up, we have complete maps with eight mods. Uh, when you apply a vile orb to a map, there is a one in eight chance that it will re-roll as uh, the same the same type of map. Uh, but with new mods and with eight of them total. Uh, so that's the only way that you, or that's the main way that you get maps with eight mods. You'll also see them drop sometimes in uh, Heist and also occasionally in Delirium content and Delve content uh, and also in Ritual content. And you can get them in a few different ways, uh, but basically 
24 of, th or well, getting 30 of them is going to take you a fair bit of mapping, but it's not an overwhelming amount. Uh, next up we have Complete Ritual Encounters 4. Uh, this is one of those random number based ones, RNG based. Uh, with the various uh, ritual encounters, there are something like 20 different ritual encounters. Five of them are common. We had those in an earlier uh, in an earlier challenge, uh, which the details of were in the guide to getting 12 challenges. Here, we have the rarer ones. And I believe that some of these have a 1% chance of spawning, some of them have a 2 or 3% chance, and some of them have a 5% chance. Uh, so you're going to need to run a lot of maps to find these. And ultimately, when you get to the position I'm in where you've got all of them except for one, chances are it's an average of 100 maps. And it's just going to be one in a hundred maps every time I open them up. One in a hundred that it's got the sanguine, uh, the sanguine ritual that I'm looking for. So this is going to be one of the last ones that you actually uh, lock down, but you will get it through natural gameplay. Uh, the other way that you can get this, if you find yourself in a situation where you're in a trade league and you've got 23 challenges done, and you really just want the 24th one, uh, jump into the trade channel trade 820 uh, and just. Post this no more than once a minute, but just say, buying Sanguine Ritual Encounter 1 Exalt. And someone will be like, oh great, I've got a Sanguine Ritual in this map and some sucker's going to pay me an Exalt for, uh, to be able to use one portal into my map. Uh, but it's a very, very much a win-win deal if you're at 23 of, of yeah, if you're at 23 of 40 and your goal is 40, uh, that's something you should be pretty happy with then. Now, next up we have Complete Encounters 5. Uh, Complete Encounters 5 is an old map bosses in encounter. So here, you'll need to defeat a Delve boss. Delve bosses are sort of uncommon until you get to about depth 200. Uh, but the reason that I've put this as, a, as very doable going for 24 challenges is that it really is something that you can just... Um, that you can get from someone else. Uh, in much the same way as we've had with the last with the last encounter, Ritual Encounters 4, uh, if you're missing the Delve boss, you can join Trade 820 and someone else will have a Delve boss ready for you to kill and they just want some sort of payment for it. Alternately, uh, Delving's a bit of fun, a bit of a, uh, a bit of a distraction from normal mapping and something that you can pretty quickly get fairly deep in nowadays, especially with all of the Atlas passives that turbocharge Sulfite gain. Uh, next up is Defeat the Mastermind. The fight with the, uh, with the Syndicate Mastermind is fairly challenging, uh, but is very, very beatable. And this is something that you should do right at the end of your time in the league. The reason for that is that fighting the Mastermind ruins all the progress you've made on your Betrayal Syndicate. Uh, so for that reason, I recommend doing this right at the end of your league, like when you are ready to um, when you're ready to finish up playing, uh, go and fight the Mastermind. The Mastermind encounter is difficult, uh, and there's not really any outstanding guides that I'm aware of that I can point you towards. Uh, there's this is an absolute brutal fight in hardcore, uh, because there's a couple of counterintuitive mechanics in the fight where the exploding skulls, uh, it's just really hard to work out exactly what to do there. Uh, because I play in softcore, I usually just expect, oh yeah, I'll probably stuff up somewhere and die once in the fight. Uh, so obviously in hardcore, that's much more of a big deal. Uh, and in hardcore, you might want to collaborate with other players to get around that. Domain of Timeless Conflict, uh, you'll need to use Legion emblems to get into this, so those Legion splinters you've been picking up. Uh, I've been really lazy on this. Doing the four-way Domain of Timeless Conflict should be a, is a really important milestone for early in a league because it unlocks the five-way map device, uh, which is a huge progression milestone for, you, for your ability to juice maps further. Uh, if I wasn't having tech issues, I would have done that earlier uh, so that I could use more scarabs. But the more scarabs that are used, the more monsters that are on a map, and the more monsters on a map, the more that the game is crashing at the moment. So I haven't done that yet, but it is something definitely that should be done. Like, I should have done it by now. Uh, you can do this, though, however, with just a two-way Domain of Timeless Conflict, uh, which is a very easy encounter. Actually drops a lot of loot. So all you need is a Karui Emblem and an Eternal Empire Emblem, uh, or you can use a Val Emblem instead if you prefer. Uh, any two of those, and you can start a Domain of Timeless Conflict. Uh, that'll be quite easy. If you put three emblems in, it'll be harder. If you put four in, it'll be quite a bit harder. Uh, and once you've got the five-way map device, if you put all five types of emblems in, uh, then you will have the true endgame 
Domain of Timeless Conflict experience, uh, which is pretty brutal. Actually, uh, you need a pretty powerful character to do well in that. Uh, next up you have Complete the Simulacrum, which is the Delirium themed unique map. Uh, so you will get del uh, Simulacrum splinters from most Delirium content. You also get a lot of them from Ritual. And this is something that it will give you a lot of loot when you do it. Uh, however, you will have to fight some very difficult bosses in there. Uh, you have Omniphobia Fear Manifest, who is not a very difficult boss, but is unforgiving. Uh, if you make a mistake, Omniphobia will kill you, but the actual fight is mechanically very easy. Then you have Kosis the Revelation, who has very, very, very high stats. Now, the Simulacrum, can, uh, you can encounter the bosses earlier in it, uh, but you can also encounter them later in it. The Simulacrum ramps up in difficulty tremendously the longer that you progress in it, and the 20th and final wave is quite brutal, especially if you get Kosis the Revelation in the 20th wave. Uh, you might find that if you're struggling a bit, uh, you may not be able to beat the Simulacrum if Kosis is in wave 20. That's fine. Uh, you can try another one. You'll, you'll have recovered your entry fee by the time you get that far. And then the next time, hopefully you'll get Kosis in say wave 17, uh, be able to get him down when, when he just doesn't have the same stat boosts that he gets from being in wave 20. Uh, and then you'll be able to beat the encounter and uh, receive, the, receive credit for encounters five because Kosis probably won't appear again. A complete unique, ma uh, complete unique maps is next. You can skip three of these. Uh, Parandus Manor used to be one that I always recommended skipping. Uh, it's actually not that hard to get now if you run maps in Lex Ejoris uh, and have the Friends of the Family node al uh, allocated. Uh, then you will be able to get yourself a Parandus Manor pretty easily. Doriani's Machinarium is the hardest of these to source. Uh, it drops exclusively from Ahutotli the Blind in the Delve Mines and it's also a pretty, uh, pretty valuable map in trade leagues. A Vinktar Square is an absolute pain to source. Uh, you need to vendor all four different, uh, all four different staves for the Agaron set, uh, and then I think you also need an Orb of Fusing as well. I can never remember that, but just try it with Agarod South, Agarod West, Agarod North, and Agarod East uh, without the Fusing Orb. See what the vendor gives you before committing to it. Uh, if you need a Fusing, you need a Fusing, and but then that gives you the Vinktar Square map and then the Vinktar Square map itself is very easy. Otherwise, everything here is pretty doable. Uh, these can be a bit of a pain to acquire in Solo Self Found. And the key tip that I've got for you in SSF is to use the Bestiary Menagerie. The Menagerie has a craft that you'll get a lot of copies of, uh, especially if you map in Lyra Athane. Uh, and that craft is, uh, sorry, that um, craft is create a random unique map. Uh, that unique map craft will really help you get these. It does respect the relative rarity of each map, and I don't believe it can give you a Vinktar Square, a Doriani's Machinarium, or a Parandus Manor, uh, but for getting all the rest of them, uh, it will help you a lot. Coward's Trial is the rarest of the rest. So overall, my suggestion here is uh, do every map, uh, do every one of these maps that you get, and then try to solve the last ones by using the uh, by using bestiary to get random unique maps. Explore the Atlas. Uh, Explore the Atlas is just a straightforward do lots of maps, do lots of different maps. Uh, this is going to require you to get all 32 watchstones. Uh, you can either use the classic watchstones, the ones that existed in the Conquerors of the Atlas era, or you can use the new Maven ones. Uh, and just use whichever ones you get first. The Maven ones are better, so ultimately you want to replace the classic ones with Maven ones eventually, but uh, you'll be able to complete this when, with whatever you happen to get 32 of first. Uh, then you're just going to need to do a wide variety of maps. I would suggest that most players will get this done by about the time they've done 700 maps if they haven't focused on getting it, and if they have focused on getting it, they'll get it done sooner. Uh, next up is complete the Maven's quest. Now, this one I would have had done except that my uh, Lex Proxima 10-way fight crashed on me. So I lost an instance because of that and then wasn't able to get back in. Uh, and so now I have to collect 10 more bosses. Uh, essentially, this is doing the, there was an earlier encounter, uh, sorry, an earlier challenge to complete the Maven's Crucible. Uh, this is doing this Maven's Crucible challenge, but doing it in all eight octants of the Atlas. So. Your goal for this one is essentially, you should be doing this at the same time as Explore the Atlas. 
Uh, so just run a wide variety of maps in all eight octants, uh, and you will get this through natural gameplay as long as you have the Maven turned on. And that's the last one. Uh, that's the last challenge that I would suggest you would need in order to get, well, 26 challenges done. Uh, so that will help you get your 24 challenges, obviously. Uh, the next video in the series is going to cover the hardest 14 challenges. Uh, so that's going to be coming out probably maybe in 24 hours time. Uh, but if you've got any comments or questions, fire away below. Otherwise, I'm going to leave it there and I hope you have a good one.